So how would you choose a topic for your project? This is going to start with those of you that are just planning to, right? You are just thinking about developing a project idea and maybe you're thinking, how do I do something like a publication that I read? Or maybe you're thinking, how do I do something in an area where I'm naturally interested in, but I really don't have the data to start doing that kind of an experiment. So that's the first point that I think we should start from is the topic that you already know and care about. So if you're currently doing uh, your PhD, you've selected a topic, you're maybe thinking of a particular experiment and you want to understand how to make it more impactful. How does omics data factor into this? If you're already conducting experiments and you've collected data, you might be thinking, how do I find additional data that I don't have the capability to generate myself, but I really want to use it to make my project more impactful, or I want to uh, develop a new hypothesis, but I don't have the means to generate the data. So that would be the first step is really having a topic that you know or you care about. And to ask yourself, is that a topic that I know and care about? Is can you prepare a few slides to explain the topic background? And can you see yourself spending a few months researching the topic? So really, for those of you that are planning some kind of bioinformatics analysis, even though it's just data analysis, it still takes time. So you have to be prepared to dedicate at least several months just to the analysis. The second part is what will be interesting to your audience? So I'm assuming that the majority of you here are already in some kind of research. And so if you think about your audience, what is that audience? That audience could be your peers, your mentors, other faculty. They could be the broader research community. And this is not a trivial question for any of those audiences. Within a niche, there's already a niche. Within every domain, there are specific topics that are more uh, interesting, they're more um, on top of everybody's mind. And so that's the second component here. The third component is that you have to have the data and you have to have um, some kind of a, um, a body of research that is available about that topic, right? So if you are planning to conduct this research and there's no data, you're back at the same place, right? So it's gotta be something that comes from availability of data. Now, in between at the intersection of these three is the project that you want to focus on. And I want to talk about this a little bit more in detail because that's where typically most of the participants that we have in our programs fail. They fail to quickly identify a relevant topic that is interesting to a broad community and find data that can help them make some kind of an interesting project out of that question. So I think that defining that question, making it specific and making it um, actually possible to execute is a big challenge that needs to be overcome. Now, when people publish, they typically publish from primary data that they have collected. And that is the raw data the first hand observation that they have themselves collected. In many cases, you are not going to be the person that generates that primary data because so much data is already available, but that doesn't mean that you cannot start your project from there. And so what we will do in the context of the first part of our program is we're going to kind of explore all of these uh, sources of data to generate a hypothesis or develop a problem or a question and then find the solution or the answer. And I think that that has to do with an overview of literature, but also the available data sets. And it has to do with a good founding, a good established understanding of methodology. How have others extracted insights from data sets that they describe? And so the typical process that we recommend is to start from where you are and try to define 
what is the specific data set, what is the problem statement that you have, and then trying to work through on how to make that into a much more specific question, because that really can help you then narrow down the number of options that you have to do your analysis. And it will uh, streamline or simplify the interpretation at the end. And so the first part is to review available sources and to categorize them by some kind of type. For example, you can think of different types of research articles that present the current topics or that focus on one specific thing. You can focus on a number of different categories, but you have to build out that overview or that kind of a landscape of where you are compared to what's already out there. And then it will be more clear where are the specific gaps, unanswered questions, maybe controversy, right? So some people don't agree with each other and maybe a debate. And those are typically the most interesting things to address. So that gap, those unanswered questions and those debates around uh, different topics is the place to focus to define your question or hypothesis. So here, what we want to do is we want to kind of review what's out there, make it more specific, where do we want to focus? And that typically will be in the place of gaps and unanswered questions. Now, a good place to start is from existing projects, right? So a part of review, and by the way, this doesn't have to be just in your domain, is to see how have other people tried to answer questions with data. And so what we've done is over the past several years, we've gone through publications that focus on specific types of problems and specific types of data and have extracted insights from that data by processing, exploring, and analyzing those data sets. So we've collected a number of projects that you can start with as a springboard into the process because they clearly take out the methods, break down those methods into tutorials that you can follow, explain the data set and how the data set was collected and why that data set is an impactful way to study that particular topic. And once you've gone through a few examples, it becomes almost easy for you to start thinking about the data in terms of a hypothesis that could be answered with a given set of tools. And so when it comes to your project, you are really going to be able to take those examples and leverage the same types of methods to apply to a data set of your own. So this is how the program that we envision is going to work. We're going to first follow through and learn about some of the basic data types and how they are processed and analyzed. Then we will introduce case studies. And those case studies will provide you with a good overview of the topics, where the data came from, how it was analyzed, and what are the results. At the end, you should develop a framework of how to apply such thinking to any new data set or a problem that you identify.